Greetings, Dan here, and it's the 1st of May, and today I'm going to be sowing some courgette seeds. So I've got two varieties here. This one I grew last year and was incredibly impressed with, and it's Trista White Half Long Cusa Courgette, Bulbous Courgette, originally from the Mideast, then from Italy. Very pale green, almost steel grey. Strong bushes, quick and early with high production. And yeah, man, they were high production. They almost layered as they grew. Massive crops off of these. A bit more of a mild taste than, say, regular green courgettes, if you want to call them that. But uh, yeah, good variety. I can recommend you grow this one. Now, a new one for me here, that's Burpee's Golden Zucchini Courgette. Selected by Ovid Schifris, I hope I pronounced that right, in the 1940s and introduced by the W. Attlee Burpee and Co. Seed House. The bushes are quite compact, producing large numbers of bright yellow fruit. So sounds good to me. Now, with regards to growing medium, I'm going to be using this here, which is multi-purpose compost, home-based brand, nothing else added to it. And I'm going to be initially bringing them on in windowsill or a windowsill propagator. So this is it here really good so a good temperature to germinate courgettes would be about 20 degrees c 68 fahrenheit they would germinate quite fine out here but um, i don't want to risk any rodents eating the seeds or anything like that so going to go inside on an indoor windowsill and you can see here look the top there of the you know the propagator that acts like a little greenhouse that's very handy as well and the size of it fits lovely on a windowsill so there we are now cell tray size i'm going to be using these here. So you see the size of them just like that, they work fine. I've germinated many courgettes like this in the past, no problem. So I fill up my cell trays here with multi-purpose compost. I'll demonstrate one to you now. So I get my little cell tray, get my multi-purpose compost, try and take out any lumps as you see them like that. Don't want them in there. And all I do is just fill up my cell tray like so, loose laid. I'm not compacting it down. Just put in like that. So we'll start here with the Trista White Half Long Courgettes, Cusa Courgettes. So I'm gonna get my seeds out like that. And I've actually only got two of these left, which is a shame, but I have actually germinated some other ones. I'll show you those in a moment. So I'll show you what the seeds look like. They look like that. So they're really nice seeds. And when I lay them, I actually lay them on their side. So we'll have a close up and have a demonstration. So literally all you do is you get your seed like that, lay it on its side and push it in like that, about an inch or so down. That's about a centimetre and a half. And you push that in like that. And that's all you do. And I'm going to put my tag in, which here, so Trista White courgette there, just like that date, variety and what it is can be good. Well, I think it's good anyway to label what you're growing so you know, particularly when you're growing more than one variety of the same thing, so you don't forget. And all I then do is just put my multi-purpose compost on top, again, taking out any lumps like that, and just do that. And that's it. So, burpees golden. Push that, get them out like that, look. There we are. All we do is that one, 11, 12. There we are, so uh, that gives us 12 of that variety there. Once again, you want to be putting your tags in, so you remember what it is you're growing. We then once again, cover with our multi-purpose compost. Take out any lumps, don't want those in there. Here they are, all planted up. So that's going to go on top there, and these are going to be going on an indoor window sill where they should get the temperature of about 20 degrees C, 68 Fahrenheit in order to germinate. So watering. In here, I have some rainwater from one of my water butts. So I don't want to be watering them with too cold uh, water. I don't want to risk shocking the seeds. A little bit cold last night, and uh, I want to make sure this is warmed up a little bit. So I can leave it out here in the polytunnel to warm up for a few hours, take it inside, etc. But I uh, don't want to be shocking the seeds too much, and you don't want your compost to be overly soggy. You want it to be sort of lightly damp to the touch so you can feel the wetness but you don't want it to have it dripping out the bottom they won't appreciate that too much and of course because the compost has been loose laid as 
you water them, it's likely that the level of compost will go down. So um, you can then just uh, you know put a little bit more multi-purpose compost on top. It's quite fine you do that. Anyway, so these are now going to be going on an indoor windowsill where which they should germinate within about two to three weeks. So I said I'd show you some Cusa courgettes that I sown earlier in the year. So these went in on the 17th of April and uh, there they are, just like that. So they'll be ready to plant out probably around mid end of May after the risk of frost has passed. So that's what these look like here. And uh, yeah, so these are doing very well as well. Greetings, Dan here, 12th of May. And today I'm planting out some courgette plants variety, Trista White Cusa courgette. And uh, I planted these on the 17th of April and uh, they're looking very strong indeed. And I'm going to be planting them here at the back of this uh, no dig bed. So it's actually not ideal here. It doesn't really get enough, enough sunlight really. You want to be looking at sunlight all day, full sunlight all day if you can. I think they get about four, five, maybe six hours or so here. But either way, uh, I'm making the best of uh, what I've got here and uh, let's do that. So I'll show you the plants now and they look really good. So you can see just what they look like. So there's actually four at the back there, one, two, or five, six, seven, and clean that little one there. Actually eight that uh, have germinated. So eight out of 10 is pretty good indeed. I germinated them inside probably after about two or three weeks. I took them out to the polytunnel and uh, here they are. So yeah, very happy indeed. Plant them out after risk of frost has passed. I did take a risk putting them out in the polytunnel before you know, around sort of mid end of May when we get the last sort of frost dates around this area, Southeast UK, USDA zone 8B, but uh, kind of everything. They were in like a little mini greenhouse in there, so that combined with the protection of the polytunnel itself, nice warm microclimate protected them, you know, quite well as you can see. Anyway, let's plant them out. So with regards to the planting out of courgettes, marrows, etc., you want to have them a good yard apart, three quarters of a metre, maybe, you know, as much as a metre or so, 3.3 feet, particularly true of this variety, I've noticed, because they walk very vigorous indeed, but um, they're going to go here about a yard apart or so. I'm not expecting them to make their true size potential here. I've got more to plant out at the allotment where I can give them more manure, etc., to get them a bit bigger down there. But here, these will be just fine indeed. So. Uh, I'm going to break my golden rule here of enriching the growing medium before I plant anything because I don't actually have any um, sort of compost at the moment here that I can budget to go here. But that's fine. This is, I have um, enriched this in previous months, years, last year, etc. So that's fine. No problem. Anyway, let's get planting. Well, here they are. Let's, uh, let's get a nice strong. Let's start with the strongest looking one, shall we? So we'll get him out. Be careful, you don't want to damage your roots or anything like that. Oh, did I? That's it. Right. Cool. Now look at that. If that's not a good root ball with a nice strong plant, I don't know what is. So, we shall start here. So, we're going to have one plant here. We'll go a bit more to the left. We have one plant here and about one here. I've actually got a, a lonesome potato planted there for another project, so I don't be covering that uh, too much. Anyway, so here we go, just one plant in there, nice and simple, and absolutely no problem at all. So here we go, right here, look, plant in. I've generally not found courgette plants to be too fussy about depth, so I'm just going to put that in like that get my growing medium and it's about uh, an inch or so give or take a little bit two centimeters maybe before where the uh, first two leaves are and uh, should get a good uh, crop off of these in a few months so i'm going to give them plenty of water rain water if possible don't allow them to dry out so right here i've got my tag date in which initially planted 17th of april what it is Cusa courgette. I haven't wrote the variety Trista White because I'll remember that. Um, and the date planted out in case of the day, 12th of May. In that goes, and we shall now await our crop. So we're still on the 12th of May, and um, you remember these that I planted out? So we've got zucchini courgettes, burpees, golden. So 
they've germinated clearly as you can see and I brought them out here I think it was yesterday a little bit leggy I left them in the prob propagator on the window so a little bit too long but you just can't do everything can you so there they are they'll be just fine they should sort of um, sturdy up a little bit now they're out here now ideally I should repot these but I really can't uh, I can't budget the time to do that but in an ideal world I would but uh, no problem they'll be just fine I'm going to leave them there and they'll I'll let them get a bit bigger than this before I uh, plant them out because I want them to be a little bit uh, more resilient. But either way, they should, uh, should do just fine. Greetings, Dan here, 14th of May. And today I'm going to be planting out these lovely courgettes, or indeed some of them, variety Trista White, sown on the 17th of April. So let's get a nice one out here. Just take care when you're popping your plants out. Just gently pull out. There we go. Absolutely lovely. Look at that, look, really nice, strong plant. So, all we do is make a little hole in our horse manure here. So you can see, I have two mounds. So I have a mound here, and I have a mound there. Relatively well composted horse manure, courgettes, marrows, etc., squash, kirkabits, they are pumpkins. They are very heavy feeders. They like plenty of nutrients, plenty of water. You want a nice, well-draining, yet fertile, growing medium and this relatively well composted manure is absolutely perfect so that's going to be going there and one of these is going to go over there and we'll have a little close-up so you can see how I'm going to plant it so I'm going to use this one here we just pop that out out we come there we are and we make our hole in the manure there and simply pop it in like that I've not found them to be overly fussy with regards to depth sort of things about right Pat down like that, nice and firm, and away we go. And also, don't forget your tag stating the date in which planted. What it is, you can also put the date in which you planted it out as well, because that can be useful to know as well. So I'm going to give these some water. Don't allow your growing medium to dry out. Plant them out after risk of frost has passed. We're in USDA zone 8B here, southeast UK, and um, no more frost is planned. We can get frost here up until around the mid-end of May, but uh, check the forecast, none planned. So there we are, or none forecast, I should say. So yeah, looking pretty good, and uh, we shall hopefully get a lovely crop off of these lovely plants. So 3rd of August, and once again, some absolutely beautiful courgettes here. Burpees golden. Oh, look at that, look, that's uh, intriguing. We'll have, a, we'll have a little close up of that. Uh, mm, there we are. But uh, these ones here are wonderful. Let's uh, twist those off. So, we've got the uh, two good ones here, and there's that one there, look. So, this is uh, intriguing, isn't it? So, I'll probably end up sort of cutting around that and uh, seeing what it is. These two look absolutely lovely. So, Burpees Golden Courgette. Put that one on your list. Nice uh, courgette. So here I am on the 11th of August in amongst the uh, pumpkin and squash patch. And I've also got a courgette here growing variety, Trista White Cusa Courgette. So let's get it out. There's one, there's another one uh, on the way there. Now let's have a look at this. That's a nice courgette. So this is Burpees Golden, I just picked this one off of it and I've got some more to come. It's been quite prolific, this variety, I hope you can see it alright, at the angle of the sun. But uh, yeah, courgettes are doing well even though we uh, haven't really had a, a lot of rain. Okay, so here we are down here on the 20th of August and going to conclude the marrow growing video now. So, pollination can be something to discuss. So. You probably would wanted to have done this a little bit earlier in the year but what you do if you want is you find a male flower i'll put a picture of one on the screen and then you find a female flower and what you can do is rub the pollen from the male flower onto the female flower so a male flower it is as it states it's a flower it doesn't have a fruitlet a mini courgette behind the flower whereas a female flower will have a mini courgette fruitlet behind the flower. So what you then do is you take the male flower and rub it onto the female flower. You can use a paintbrush, you can remove the whole flower if you want, or you can just do what I do and leave the pollinating insects such as bees to do it. But that's just something that can be spoken about. Indications of poor pollination could be something like fruit that drops off or funny shaped fruit, something like that. But so these are all things you can look into if you want to sort of 
take the extra step to uh, you know a better crop or better you know more crop whatever so anyway here we are look that's a lovely courgette there should really be using um, a knife to cut these off but I'm just gonna there we go so there we are that one there like that so anyway got some nice plants there or courgettes and uh, that's it really comments questions whatever please feel free to post below see you in the next video so just a quick point you may have noticed that I sometimes pick my courgettes when they're quite big what you can do is pick them when they're smaller and then that can encourage more to come it depends what you're going to do with them so courgettes you know chopping them up when they're small and uh, having them in a stir fry something like that or let them get bigger like I do and people stuff them with all manner of things so uh, you know once again it's personal choice personal preference and uh, whatever you're interested in doing really and um, yeah there we are see you next time